Hello, I wasn't going to do a video for this, but um, I was going to type it all out, but I find it so easy, much easier to explain things in a video. What I'm going to link to are where I got that CG, that lawyer lady talking, was at, uh, at a conference. And on the YouTube user channel, there is where all the rest of that conference is. So there's going to be a link to that somewhere. I'll call it the CG, CG conference. And I'm going to link again to Richard Koo, who's speaking at another conference. So I'm going to link to that conference, and that's got um, a web page as well. And while I remember, Kumhoff was speaking at that conference as well as Koo. And these are the people that are thinking about economics and how it could go forward and actually be uh, useful. Kumhoff, as I remember, is the IMF man that wrote the paper about the Chicago plan. So somehow I'll find links to all of these. And I can't, you know, I will listen or have listened to all of these, but I've got time. And when I can't watch them, I download them. I'll do you a link to any video converter as well, which I use for, um, I use Real Player. So as soon as you get a video up on the screen, you get your little Real Player thing up, which says download this video. Click download this video. It downloads the video so you can either watch it later or do what I do often if I'm not going to watch it later in that way. I run it through any video converter to an MP3 player and play it while I'm out working like I will be this morning in a minus four degrees um, doing some concreting so I can listen to it. And if I think I have to come back and look at some charts, I'll come back and look at the charts anyway. So what am I saying? I don't expect you to listen to them. I'll listen to them. I'll tell you about them. The coup one though. I'm putting coup up again. Now if you've only listened to Koo once in the last four or five years, I strongly encourage you to listen again. He's not going to say anything new. His tune doesn't change. But there's no way of understanding what Koo says when you've only heard the presentation once. I've probably heard it 15 times, and on the 16th time that I hear it, I'll learn something new. So if you've only listened once, I just encourage you to listen again. Because... This is what we've got. When the rest of the world aren't like Japan in that they're just like Japan. Japan was, their corporate sector did the running up and they ran up a huge way. So the drop was utterly huge. It was just an out of proportion thing. And what Ku's saying, this is the way you get around it if you don't ruin your banks. But perhaps, I read an article this morning, I'll put a link to I'll put a link to that as well, where J Japan has just, um, it's an FT article, so I'll just put it up as a picture, because you won't be able to get to it. Um, they've just introduced, it was this morning's FT, this, this, the second stimulus in as many weeks, I think, or certainly a month, that, and this is a, another $10, 11000000000 billion stimulus. They're, no, they're not there yet, so the, you can ask the question, if you do Ku's solution, it doesn't get you out of the problem even after 20 years. So what I would encourage you to think is, oh well, don't dismiss it. It's easy to say, well, it hasn't worked, so stuff the stupid man. But just hold what Ku says as an example of what can be done. And then you have examples of other things that can be done. And then you balance between them. It's not a question of getting something somebody says, finding a reason why it hasn't quite worked um, to your satisfaction and throw it away. That's the way most people work. We shouldn't work like that. We should hold all these things in mind. 
it takes a bit more effort to hold these things in mind because when you throw it in the bin you think that your mind's been cleared of these things it hasn't really but you think you've dismissed it and you can go on to fresh new things it do doesn't work like that and dismissing things really doesn't help anybody so that's coo and come off and the rest of the people that are talking about these things do i have an overall thing to talk about We've been five years into this problem now and it's far from resolved around the world. The government debts are going to go up and up. They're doing austerity at the moment. They came into it in 2008 and did their stimulus thing and it, it's, it's done a bit of work. It's kept things from falling to pieces. Uh, behind the scenes, the authorities of this, that and the other have done whatever they do. And it looks like it's holding together. But it, it's kind of, it's going down again. And they've got this idea in their head, boosted from the fact that they were boosted by the stimulus, that they can now do austerity and get their government budgets in order. They cannot. It isn't total coup, but it's enough coup to say no you can't do it all right that's that's what we can take from coup enough of the governments in the world especially if the u.s does it now are going to pull a whole world economy down not immediately plunging into a depression but it'll just go down it'll go into negative it'll go into recession and then if it's world then it'll be bordering on a depression so what are the governments going to do? They are going to spend. The the major gov. I could put up other charts, but all talk of government spending going down are nonsense. Either the world economy is going to go down. No, is it? Which way would it be? Well, that's what would happen. The 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 governments overall spending goes down the economy goes down or the um but that's what they're going to try they they it'll it'll have they're going to have to get you to experience it they won't notice you're going to have to experience it so they can go oh shit maybe ku had a bit of a point so let's do a bit of a they'll think of something else i've said this so many times over the last four years they'll probably invent some sort of uh, global warming or green or some sort of thing that they're going to spend the money on but they are going to spend the money they might develop ways they'll say well this part of the money we're not going to put on our balance sheet so it doesn't go up as in, in our debt to gdp but we'll all know everybody will know it's nonsense and um, all even the mainstream media will, will add it on so it government debt to gdp is going to go up it's going to go on up you know the eurozone started this crisis at about 55 57 i think it was and now it's close to 90 it's going to go up through 100 quickly after we have felt the pain of them saying austerity is a good idea it's going to be the same in the united states they've gone up through 100 now they're going to get to 110 very quickly then 120 then 125 then 135 and keep on going that's the way it's going to be there is no other option this idea of austerity put your belt in work harder do this and that it does not work because we live in a civilized situation where if people get let off work we don't let them starve in the streets we pay them lots of money from the government coffers and that's what's going to happen if the government doesn't pay the economy goes down more people have to be paid out from the government coffers you have to spend more it's just a fact and this is what's going to happen anyway you've got these links to various conferences if you've got time but um if, if there's no other takeaway from this video, if you don't go any further, uh, there is no way that government debt to GDP ratios are not going to go up. Bye.